Thank you. <clears throat> and um, who's next? Uh, Representative from Delaware, Representative McBride. Thank you very, uh, very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much to you and Rep, uh, Ranking Member Lofgren for convening this hearing on chemistry competitiveness. And thank you so much to our witnesses for bringing forward your expertise uh, and sacrificing your time today to speak with us. Wilmington is often called the chemical capital, a title earned through a long history of chemical innovation. Delaware is the birthplace of nylon, Teflon, Kevlar, and Gore-Tex, materials that fundamentally changed how Americans live. And while these products were brought to market by industry, their development would not have been possible without the basic science carried out at our national labs and premier research institutions. For instance, work carried out by Dr. Joseph Fox's research group at the University of Delaware led to, to the development of the tetrazine ligation the fastest known chemical reaction that can take place inside a living system without affecting the living system itself. This work is now used in the development of medical imaging, targeted cancer therapy, and wound dressing, among other purposes. In another example, a collaboration at the University of Delaware uh, is developing the environmental protection garment shell, which will, be f which will form the outer layer of spacesuits to prevent lunar dust particles from penetrating the material. This life-saving and fundamental work is made possible through funding provided by the federal government. Government funds are essential and integral, and they help to fund research that market forces alone do not always incentivize. It's this research that helps commercialization poss make, make commercialization possible, and it's imperative that Congress continues to provide funds for independent, world-class research that saves lives and improves our economy. Innovation does, not, uh, innovation does not end with invention. It's critical that the manufacturing, storage, use, and disposal of these chemicals and their byproducts is monitored and responsibly regulated to protect the water we drink, the air we breathe, and the land we depend on. Congress must continue to provide monetary support for fundamental research, back research scientists, and trust the peer-reviewed science that helps keep Americans across the country healthy and safe. And, and my first question is to Dr. Myberg. Federal funding supports the basic chemical research that helps industry develop products for commercialization, but it also, as we've talked about throughout today's hearing, underpins independent safety science. What are the consequences for public health and U.S. global competitiveness when EPA lacks the resources or sta staffing to independently evaluate chemical risks? Um, thank you very much, Congresswoman, for that question. Um, the basic issue there is that, um, and we, there was some discussion of data sets earlier, and that's a very relevant point here because while there is a tremendous amount of data, there are also data sets that are missing about potential exposure cases, for example, so that you can do risk-based evaluation and not hazard-based evaluation, because it's entirely correct that when you think about risk, it's a combination of hazard and exposure. But if you don't know what the fate and transport is of chemicals in the environment, then you can't do a very good a job of assessing what potential exposures would be. And the, this is one of the issues that comes up in the review of chemicals is that the agency simply doesn't have the information about the potential fate and transport of chemicals in the environment and goes back to, to um, applying companies to ask for more information about that. And that can get into a cycle where it, which ends up um, causing a longer um, review cycle than you might otherwise wish to have. And so it's very important that there be good communication between the agency and applicants. And that when the agency says, you know, we just don't have the data here, it becomes the responsibility of the applicant to help su uh, supply that. And EPA has adequate authority under TSCA to make those kind of requests. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Uh, Bertrand, chemical manufacturing, as I've talked about, creates jobs and, and helps fuels my state, fuel my state's economy. Um, but I'm curious if you could speak to how public research dollars and public research infrastructure helps to keep businesses competitive globally. So the business of chemistry is all about science, and so it's an ever-evolving um, research and development. Um, the, the chemistry sector is one of the largest sectors in the United States for making investments into research and development. Um, one of the, the numbers that I mentioned 
in my uh, written testimony is that um, chemical manufacturers in 2024 have invested $14.8 billion into research and development of new chemistries, new products, new manufacturing. Um, so of course this research and development um, will leverage um, information and science um, from across all different types of sources to in moving something forward. Great, thank you, I yield back. 